But that's not brainwashing. Uh, we don't use the term. It's unscientific. It's paternalistic. It's, uh, it's risky. It's, sometimes we refer to it as a fishing expedition. That uh, you don't really have any good information to tell you that it's going to work, but you think it might, and that's kind of dangerous. We keep a number of patients in the sunroom who, for one reason or another, want to be there, who we think are helpful with these more acutely disturbed patients. And they live there as a group that generally becomes fairly close and cohesive in a gentle and quiet way. The sunroom is where Smith was given scopolamine. Sunroom. So, what do you think? A coat of paint doesn't change much. This is exactly the same as it was. Coming back into this room, this scares the shit out of me. Oh. Oh, man. When I first came into this room, this is the spot I would have sat right here. It's so much smaller now. Sat here, scopolamine, and saw some little demon about this big running across this floor towards me over and over and over. Drugs, just constant drugs, constant pressure. After several weeks of drug treatments, scopolamine, amphetamine, that's the spot where I picked up the corner of the mattress and little specks of dust on the floor that you can see there even now was all living, squirming bugs, worms, insects, hallucination. Delirium is uh, kind of a nice descriptive word for it, and that's what it is. Uh, uh, basically, it's, uh, it can be any combination of paranoia, fear, delusions. I think it's kind of dangerous. Uh, I think that you're putting the most susceptible population at risk of having worsening dissociations as time goes on. I didn't belong here. This was a mistake. I, I was not Canada's toughest criminal. I, I, I had stolen a car. I was a young hippie. I got hurt badly in this room. I can't talk about that. Smith's visit to Oak Ridge wasn't just frightening memories and empty rooms. Hi, Peter. Some of the patients from the 60s are still here. Smith and this man were handcuffed together for days at a time. Therapists for one another. Well, it's been I'm a sorry while. I walked past you and didn't. No, know that's you. okay. I, I wouldn't have recognized you. I didn't recognize you. You wouldn't have recognized me neither. How are you doing? 30 years. 30 years. Imagine that. Excuse me. Yeah. Come on in. He is Mike Kruger. He changed his name from Peter Woodcock a three-time child killer during the 1950s. He molested dozens. Just the kind of psychopath Dr. Barker thought he could cure. Oh, I love that. Yeah, isn't that nice? That's beautiful. That's, uh... You're so fortunate to live out there. Oh, I know. Look, Smith is polite, more like a high school reunion. But when they were strapped together, Kruger used to scare him with details of his murder spree. How Look at this. Well, I'm still pleased that you uh, have done well and that uh, we were a small part of it. Kruger didn't do so well. In 1991, he struck again, killing another mental patient just two hours into his first day pass in 33 years. For me, it was a last hurrah. There was a, like a physical, sensual excitement. I was the one who uh, pulled down the trousers to make it look like a sex crime. But why? it was not a sex crime. Why, would, why did you do that? Just to confuse the authorities. And what did you do to make it look like a sex crime? I stabbed him in uh, various rather personal parts of the anatomy. I'm very uncomfortable about this part of it. For years it had been taken on faith that the Oak Ridge experiment did some good. What we found was startling. Those psychopaths who, committed, who participated in the program had a significantly worse outcome than the psychopaths who did not participate in the program but went to prison instead. This was truly remarkable that you could um, change the behavior of psychopaths but it was for the worst. We're still finding um, guys committing new violent offenses who were graduates of that program. We had some serial rapes. We had at least half a dozen uh, murders. What would happen to a doctor that tried to do this today? 
not a committee in the country uh, uh, in the last 20 years or 30 years would approve a study like this. By the late 1970s, the Oak Ridge program was shut down. That's modest comfort to Smith. Right from the very beginning, all I wanted was for Barker to stand up and say, yeah, this shouldn't have happened to you. Perhaps we made a mistake, and I would have left it alone a long time ago. Today, Dr. Barker has a practice not far from Oak Ridge. He runs the Canadian Society for the Prevention of Cruelty to Children. For what you think, he's away on holidays. Yeah. Well, tell him I was here. Tell him I'm sorry I missed him. The doctor wasn't in. He declined our request for an interview, too. As an inmate, Steve Smith learned he could get his case before a review board. He applied and was released after eight months at Oak Ridge. I've come back here. I've accomplished what I wanted to do. I've told my story. Now I want to put this place behind me. I never want to see this place again. I don't want to think about this place anymore. You've, you've been back a little while now. What's that visit do? Oak Ridge isn't as big a thing to me as it used to be. It's not as frightening. And it's, it's not, it's not a, a deep, dark secret that I, have to, that I have to hold anymore. And so he's distanced himself from the child killer and from the memories of a bad trip through a bizarre chapter in Canadian psychiatric history. Walking through those bars, having the doors closed behind me, it was frightening, and at the same time it was cathartic, I suppose, because they, they treated me well, they treated me with some respect, and I was able to walk out the door as a free man. Um, that, was, that was a powerful feeling. For The National, I'm Wayne Williams. Please do not go anywhere.